Welcome, everyone. So we have our finale episode right now. We are going through episode nine of What If? And we have brought in a multiversal celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, we have Demanda Martini in the house with us today. <laughs> Hi, and everybody. Going. <laughs> Hi. I mean, I know we're all surprised that well, I'm back, back, back again. <laughs> Wait, okay, look at her earrings. That's demand of money right there. <laughs> demand of money. Demand of money. The demand of money brought, brought you action. I mean, I want okay. to be your drag daughter and be named Demand of Money. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Daryl, I didn't even get it until now. <laughs> demand of money. Um, Jason, um, um, Nerd Alert said that in our Plan F Scanning chat, uh, was hilarious. I'm like, oh, that actually is a really good drag name. Um, but yeah, and, and actually, aside from this wig, and of course makeup, those but like, all of the rest of these things were really good. Yeah. Yes. What was his name? What's his name? She's a kept woman, everyone. <laughs> no! 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 So these earrings were Christmas presents from uh, my friend Jason and Erica, who do uh, who do a lot of my video editing and make uh, help with a lot of my cosplays. My X Men uniform is uh, my prize from winning Captain Green Lantern back in 2018. Oh! And, my, and my Marvel Girl mask is from Dax Exclamation Point, who made it for me for my birthday this year. So. I am not a kept woman. <laughs> I have never had a sugar daddy. I've never wanted a sugar daddy. If I wanted a sugar daddy, I could go ahead and get one because I am what? Sickening. You could never have a sugar daddy because you are not that kind of girl. Anyway. Wait, Demanda, um, for those who are listening in on the podcast, so and not seeing it on YouTube, tell us, tell us this look. Tell us this entire so look. Please. In celebration of a what if, um, I thought it might be fun to sort of like mix some of the looks that I had and also just reuse all the shit that I already have in my closet. And I decided to do a, what if Betsy Braddock was the original Marvel girl? So I am wearing um, the 19, I guess it's like the later 60s, early 70s Marvel girl uniform, the uh, original blue and gold X uniform with her blue mask. And of course my matching X earrings, but I'm, I've got my uh, Betsy hair on to, to be uh, Betsy Braddock. I... What would that have been interesting? Oh, sorry. I uh, my belt has a little button on it, and I keep forgetting that it's right here. So anytime I put my hand on my side, my belt just flies across the room. Yes, I'm sorry we just didn't catch that on camera. I know. I know how unfortunate. Um, have you been enjoying what if? So actually, I have. Um, I so like some of them have been like really dark, and some of them have just been like, oh, this is just fun. This is just fun in camp like the original comic series. So I did enjoy um, some of the comics. I, I wasn't like a, someone who like got every like what if issue, like you know, someone for the other comics, but um, I would get, um, you know, an X-Men issue here and there. I also just love a good alternate universe story. Like most of my favorite X-Men stories are, um, you know, uh, uh, Age of Apocalypse, Days of Future Past, um, Age of X, uh, where it's, it's, you know, it's like that whole, you know, what, you know, the, the what if question, the, oh, so, so like, what, what if these things are different? I mean, many years ago, and I still have the drawings somewhere, um, when I used to draw a lot, um, I did create my own alternate universe where Betsy stayed blonde. Um, yes. I've always been a fan of blonde Betsy. I know I've talked about it a million times on many different things before. Um, but anyway, I just thought it'd be interesting. Uh, it's also just a cute look, because like, with Betsy, with all of like her signature purple, and then like the blue and gold of the X-Men um, cause she only wore, so she wore this uniform twice in the comics, once in the late eighties when everybody did, when they had their mission in space against the scrolls. And then when she got brought back to life uh, by her brother, Jamie, uh, and like, what was that? Like the 2005? Mm -hmm. like right before, like right right before House of M. <clears throat> House of M, not House of X, House of M. Um, but she's never worn this when she was in uh, when she's been in her original British body before, so I thought that I would give us well, you that. bringing look, it to life. You're bringing it to life, it looks so beautiful. You always look so majestic. Oh. I mean, there's a reason why every single episode of Power of X Men we talk about Amanda Martini. Well, thank you. So, the show, I 
I really, I really have enjoyed it. Um, from the beginning, though, because of the way that the show is marketed with like certain characters, and like there is definitely like a star character of each one. I definitely got the feeling that it was going to turn into an exile situation where they would be plucking the characters out of their universes to solve a problem at the end. Like I just got that sort of feeling almost yeah. immediately. Like especially um, when when they were promoting Captain Carter so much. Oh, everywhere. So and like she has become such an amazing, uh, amazingly popular cosplay for a lot of female cosplayers like Wilder Moves, who is incredible. Oh, we um, love Alicia. And she was on episode one of our coverage oh, really? as Captain Carter. Oh, wonderful. Um, and um, so like, I could just kind of tell that like that's where we were going. And so then at the end of last episode where we saw that, uh, I don't know, should we call him like Demon Doctor Strange? I was like, <laughs> oh, I was like, okay, got it. We're the, 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 I, I, I figured this is what we were doing. I'm excited to see where they go. So about this particular episode, the finale, one thing that I was kind of disappointed in is um, the fact that they just brought in this this version of Gamora without really a lot of her backstory happening. Usually when they do things like that and like these what if or exiles type stories, that's the character that dies because you kind of don't care about them because you don't, right. you haven't had any sort of like whatever. And, or, or like, um, the Killmonger character who, though he's a very popular character and people like him, he's not a likable character. Like he's not something that we should, we shouldn't be rooting for him because we know that he's not been a very good person. Um, I was expecting him to die. You know, he got stuck in like a multiverse cage or something. Yeah. Ha- like the same thing they did for Doctor Strange. Yeah, like ha- hashtag comics, like, you know, whatever. <laughs> just drink. Guys, just drink every time something doesn't make sense. Trying to make sense. Um, so like I, I I kind of felt that like the stakes weren't there um, because like because because like in the zombie one like people were like people were dying like people were dying uh, the Ultron one where Clint also died it was like those stakes were being built and the fact that in this finale we didn't have that same thing just kind of was a little bit of a letdown to me just because like it made it feel like it wasn't as scary it wasn't as intense um because again like th- that's the whole in my opinion that's the whole thing that i i love about alternate stories is that there are no rules you can kind of do whatever because there's no consequences because the main universe is still happening like the main yeah, universe yeah. is over there protected and sacred in its little sacred timeline um so you can do whatever so you know like in age of apocalypse like it's so dark and gritty and you can just kill everyone and Oh my gosh, like when Colossus runs over Kitty, like, oh, yeah. that was so heartbreaking. And the me. caption, she thinks that their, their love will save them or her, you know? Oh, oh. No. oh no, no. Or, or even at the, the last issue of, of Generation Next, when Colossus just oh. leaves the kids in, in the thing. Oh, oh. So it's like, heartbreaking. Like, so, so, like, those are the kind of stakes that like I'm looking for in like a what if alternate universe type of story because you can have those and have it not be. A thing like I was actually a little surprised that um, they didn't bring in Spider Man from the zombie universe. Right, Agreed. I, yes. I, I did like the little uh, Wanda zombie cameo. That was oh, awesome. I love that. Um, hey. Yeah, yeah, but but like but but that was more brought in for like comedic effect, which yeah. is fine. Um, but like I was expecting something like something from there. I'm glad that you know they had like kind of a resolution for for that Black Widow from the Ultron universe. Um, for for Peggy Carter as well um you know it like like all of those things were were nice but I still just didn't feel the stakes um someone today in in one of the group chats that I'm in was talking about the show and they were like oh I didn't like it um you know whatever and I'm like okay you know that, that's fine if you don't like it I'm like for me if if this episode were my employee I would give it a met expectation <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I literally said that same thing to Cole, and it's fine. It to me, it's like on par with Black Widow, which is better than yeah. Ant Man, just right there. You know, like it wasn't bad it at all. Yeah, it it did its job. It resolved this season, but it didn't do it in any surprising fashion, and they played it real safe with how they resolved everything. It was a very safe ending. And where... it, it, 
I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, oh, I, I expected we'll something bigger. Like I expected the X-Men. <laughs> like, like you said, Amanda, like, is someone going to die or is something really going to mess with the prime universe with how they've set things up? Or, or is there going to be any, con- so like with Loki, I assumed like when that show ended that nothing's going to affect like the, the sacred timeline. But now it's like, oh, no, wait. Oh, no, things actually might like there, I, you know, this whole, this whole thing. So I was like, oh, is what if going to like continue on that where that. it's like, you know, WandaVision is like, nope, we're busting shit open. And then Loki's like, we're busting shit even further. And I was like, oh, is what if going to continue? But it really, it definitely pulled like that classic uh like greek slash roman theater of like the deus ex machina where it's like i am god and this is how i'm gonna stop this and now it's ended and now we're done precisely like it was very that and and that's been my qualm especially when thinking of the infinity stones and i know they said in this episode every universe has very unique infinity stones but they weren't a fucking drawer in Loki. So that goes to show you they're not as powerful the, the idea is they're not supposed to be as powerful. And and I don't know, the, the reveal that the Watcher kind of, like, knew all along, I was just kind of, like, short, like, had planned it all along. I was like, okay. It, it's, it, it's it, again, what, I, I say this a lot, and that's why I continue to drink to try to make sense. <laughs> it's whatever story the writers are trying to yeah, tell. Yeah, that's and fair. How, and how they figure the best way to mm. resolve it. And so that's just kind of what they did. Was it, was it, the, was it the best? I don't think so. No. But was it, but is it done now? Yeah. Did it leave certain things open that they can't just like any good comic book story yeah. where there's ways that it can uh you know move and shift and you know we can you know go back to those characters and it definitely left the window right open for them to be like hey look we've have these Natasha's over here that we can just if Scarjo didn't sue Disney <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I agree. You know, they, they, they've left it open that, like, they can just like in comics, they can still do whatever they want to. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, as far as the Infinity Stones go, the MCU in general, um, and this is a slight, slight disagreement that I had with someone in a group chat today, like, the MCU in general really did not do a good job of defining what, who and what the Infinity Stones can really do. Um, so, like, the, the power stone definitely got like a, yeah, it makes shit blow up. And if you hold it long enough, it will make you explode. And if you touch things with it, it'll blow up. Like, like that one's like one that like kind of definitely got its, this is what this does. Um, like the ether slash the reality stone, not really, like it's really good at like creating illusions, um, but it doesn't like, but that to me is not a reality Thing, like what what a reality stone should really be doing it really absolutely it, it's really like more illusions the mind stone i can control other people's minds um i you know i can read people's minds although vision never used the mind stone like that he used it to blast things because vision shouldn't have had the mind stone but that is <laughs> a, a whole other thing <laughs> but and like the time stone yeah they can go back and forth in time but like, and uh, uh, and the and the sp- the space stone can teleport. Yeah. But it's like, but th- but like, how did those things combined make you able to change reality? When if you have a stone called the reality stone, agree. You, you should be able to do whatever you want. And then mm-hmm. the soul stone, they were just like, yeah, you have to die in order to get it. And like that the was soul, like that was the it. soul stone. Oh, it's our spooky stone. So <laughs> you're gonna Ooh. have to a crypt to get it. So, Red Skull. Red Skull's guarding it. Ooh, yeah, be scared. And when you get it, then you have it. <laughs> and, and the thing is, I, I really feel like they missed the opportunity to use it a little bit more like they had it in Infinity Gauntlet. Like, I honestly and many people I talked to thought that when people got snapped, that they went inside the soul gem. And that mm. part of the fight would be the people trying to get out of the soul gem. And I was like, that actually would be a really entertaining movie. They're not be able to fit all of that into two and a half hours or three as the, uh, you know, as uh, Endgame yeah. was. It's like, but it, w- it would have been interesting. Kind of also like, um, what was Earth X? Where like the yeah. people had to fight in heaven 
to like get out of heaven or whatever. Like, it's yeah, been because time. death had like stopped and yeah, yeah. because they killed death or something. <laughs> um and poor dazzler she was like like in pain with no heart yeah like all the time anyway because comic books um (laughs) drink yeah exactly um but that's your official drinking game by the way sidebar oh it's 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 but daryl have i explained to you my drinking game no please walk us through it i have a very long-standing drinking game with my friends so there's two rules the first one is the one that that i I talk most about on here where you have to drink to try to make sense or drink for trying to make sense. So when you're watching a movie, reading a book, reading a comic book, you know, whatever. But for Dale. Yeah. And yeah. And you really start like trying to think too much into it. And you're like, but wait, this doesn't make sense. Like, why is this happening? For example, do you say Riverdale? Yeah. Well, that's how we first, that's how I first found out about it. Cause we, we bonded about talking about Riverdale and you're like, girl, just drink. Yeah. For, exactly. So like he got attacked by a bear. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, going, we're just going to accept that and say yes and and move on. <laughs> like we're not going to try to question it or whatever. So that, that, that's the rule number one. Rule number two is if they say the title of the movie, you have to drink. That doesn't count if it's the name of a team or or like the name of a character. So like okay. it, like during Buffy, like you can't drink every time they say Buffy or you're going to die. Um, <laughs> like like that like that, that 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 not those kind of things, but like. But like, for example, when, um, oh, what's one of the worst ones? I'm trying to think of it. Um, but like, it's literally like the end of the movie. Someone just says it and you're like, just drink. <laughs> like, like, what a dumb, what a dumb way to kind of, kind of, anyway. So yeah, so if they say the, mo- the name of the movie, you also have to drink. Okay. Ooh, oh, interesting. Well, uh, uh, another one is, uh, another one that was like, that is The Heat, the one with Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy. And like, we're bringing the heat. And I was like, you did not. <laughs> you did not drink. <laughs> yeah, girl. I um, love that. That is a wonderful drinking game. It, it is. It's it's fun. It, 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 it gets you, it gets you in the frame of mind, in my opinion, to not, like, listen, criticism is fine. You know, it, dissect it later and say what you liked and didn't like about stuff. That's fine. I'm not saying that you can't, but it's like, just enjoy it for like the piece of media that it is in the moment and just, yeah. And well, just, some, you need to move on. I was talking about this with Ryan Panagos, agent M. And he said, you know, there are so many spaces because he gets criticized because he does the Marvel podcast and they're like, Oh, you guys never criticize or do, you know, talk about these plot points on there. And you see, you're like, you know, there are places where you can and certainly moments and spots on the internet where you can do that. But we're, we're celebrating this medium because we love comic books. We love these heroes. So to echo exactly what you're saying, Demanda, it's like, yeah, I mean, think about it later, but just enjoy it, you know? But, but, but yeah, so, so like, yeah, like the Infinity Stones, it's like, they weren't, they weren't used correctly or properly. And I'm like, but that's, a, yeah. again, then they make up the rule later. Mm-hmm. Again, because once they say it on screen, it's canon, right? Yeah. But when Gamora says, oh, the, that was meant to destroy my Infinity Stones, not these Infinity Stones. So it's like, okay, so I have to take that rule and accept it and, and <laughs> move on. So it just works differently. It works. Yeah, it works okay. differently. And, With- and, 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 and again, if you try to read too much into it, it's like, again, that wasn't the writer's intent. That's not what the story they were trying to tell. Um, again, the same thing with like the whole Mephisto debacle that, you know, we're still in the midst of <laughs> with, with this latest phase of, of MCU. Um, uh, I mean, I'm calling it now strange and no way home. It's Mephisto. <laughs> Sorry, I'm putting on my clown <laughs> makeup. Um, you, you know, again, it's, it's, it's the story. It's the story that they want. So, you know, it's Agreed. not the story that, that, you, that you want or that you are expecting. Um but yeah, so, to, but like to get back to it, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, not to be like, they should have killed everyone, but it's like, I just expected like someone to die or like something interesting with like Killmonger having a noble sacrifice because yeah. he's a character that is not quote likable that, oh my gosh, no, I, I'm seeing that, you know, for the betterment of everyone, but no, instead he was like, no, we're going to use these to take over everywhere. Yeah. It's like, mm. it's like no, you're still a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> And I think with this episode, it was Chadwick Boseman's final performance as Black Panther. Mm-hmm. But I, we got more of him than I thought we would. I thought we were just getting him for one episode and we got his Same. appearance in, I think, four of them. 
Um, mm -hmm. So it was wonderful to be able to see him or hear him one last time. Um, I don't feel that T'Challa was used as effectively as maybe they could have, um, but they they drew in the different characters, so it, you have to give everyone a moment to shine. Yeah. Well. So, so so yeah, but also it's like when they were recording that it's not like they thought that oh no oh. We're, we're 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 still getting a whole other movie with him. Yeah, I'm glad he was in this because I think as an audience member, you know, they obviously have to dress it in Black Panther 2. However, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. But I wanted a chance to really say goodbye. And I feel like I the, the Star Lord that we saw he was able to create was a symbol of hope. He unified people. Those scenes with Thanos being like, come on, this sounds like a great idea. Half the universe, come on. It, it was lighthearted. And I think really spoke to the kind of effect T'Challa has. So I thought it was a great send off. I was very sad. I, I, was, I, I was super sad that this is probably the last time we will see him as and, T'Challa. And, and, and also, uh, you know, the little blip that you see of him going back to his universe where he saves Star-Lord and then he and Peter then become like yeah. a team. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's, 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 that's cute. Fun. That's awesome. Like, it was I, cute. I it was awesome. It was, yeah, I mean, the overall series, I felt, here's a question I do have and I want to ask both of you because, Daryl, we've talked about it that the pandemic, this was supposed to be a 10-episode series. And it went down to nine. I wonder if we would have gotten an episode with a little bit more buildup with a little bit more backstory for Gamora, but the production schedule just got fucked because of the pandemic. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Yeah, but... I, I could see that as a possibility. It's Marvel, so they do a really good job editing. Mm -hmm. So it, you, there are so many gaps that we could identify. Each one of them could be possible. And each one of them is also probably as improbable as the next yeah because they're not going to tell us what their plans were unless they come out with you know like some breaking news on I mean, yeah i mean and, and, and unless they do like a a special features episode where they're like these are the things that we were cut these are the things that we thought yeah. about doing and you know. I always just get so curious from the business aspect. One thing that I have to tell you that I loved so much, and I hope we see more of Lake Bell as Scarlet. Oh my God, I was going to say Scarlet Johansson. Lake Bell yeah. as Black Widow. Oh my God, I loved her voice. I loved her. I did hear Poison Ivy every time, but I was fine with it. I think it worked. Yeah. Like <laughs> I mean, the, the, I mean the, the, the voices that, that we got... Um... That word, you know, for the people who weren't there uh, mm -hmm. to, to record. I think I think did a good job. I mean, I still, I, I you know, I, I I still believe that that they were the characters that they that they were supposed to be. Um, like none of it, none none of them bothered me to where I was like, mm, no, nah, wrong. wrong. Um, because I mean, because I mean, uh, because who it was, and it was also mostly mostly the the female stars. But like they were, um. Uh, but so so Scarlett Johansson uh, was didn't didn't come back. Uh, um, James Spader didn't come back either. James Spader. Um, uh, Tom. I don't think Captain Marvel. So Carol didn't come back. Brie um, Larson. Elizabeth Olsen wasn't you know wasn't. Uh, I mean, granted, it was the only episode she was in was Grunts. So yeah. Well, I, she's I coming think... next season. They would be foolish not to do a Wanda episode next season. Um, yeah. Uh. Chris Evans, Robert Downey oh, Jr. Yeah, Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr. And, Renee. Uh, oh my God, I'm forgetting her last name. Um, uh, uh, Z Z Z Zoe Saldana didn't. Oh yeah. Um, it's just Chris Pratt. I, you see that Daryl, I'm sorry, Daryl, I'm going to go on my rant again. Like, that's what I don't understand. Why couldn't they just use unused footage of Chris Pratt in The Guardians or just recycle some audio? Because literally he has like three words he says. I don't get it. I don't get it. What it, Chris Pratt has such a stamp on the character. Same with Brie Larson. I'm just curious why. And Tom Holland. Why don't they have that? And Tom Holland, I know the Sony thing, everything, but but, but, but oh yeah, and Tom Holland. Um, probably because they didn't want to pay Chris Pratt. Oh, this is. I mean, I mean, and, and, and it's not. It's not. They don't want to pay Chris Pratt. So they don't like him, but. It's like, yeah, he's well, expensive. Someone else to say three words and not pay $10 million. But, but that's my thing. Why did, what, look, I get it. I, I get it. Agents, negotiations, everything. But like Chris Pratt, like again, owns this character, has a stamp I mean, on this I mean, version I mean, of the character. I mean, the thing is, like, I'm sure that 
Natalie Portman still got paid for Endgame, even though they didn't have any new footage of her <laughs> because they still had to put her name in the movie. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm sure she still got paid again. So yeah. it's just like, do we just ask this guy who can do a whatever impression yeah, fair. Chris Pratt to, say, to say three to four words? Or do we, do we say, hey, Chris Pratt, we need you to say three words <laughs> for, this, for this episode? Like, Chris Pratt, I, I'm going to put you on speaker. <laughs> Right, right, right. Oh, I love that. Wait, what did you guys think of that ending with Captain Carter finding the Hydra Stomper and, of course, someone inside? Presumably Steve. Presumably Steve. I mean, I, th- I, I think we're, I think we're going to continue on with, with Captain Carter's story mm-hmm. next season and, and what if. Um, just because, again, she became popular. Uh, they marketed her super hardcore. Yeah. They've obviously already killed off Haley Atwell, and they're like, "Hey, we still like you. They, the, the the audience still loves you. Let's bring you back in to have you do some more stuff." But we don't have to film anything. Just come in and use your voice. Now we don't have to worry about, you know, as you know, budget or whatever. Um, it would it would be interesting to see how Winter Soldierified Steve is inside the Hydra Stomper. Yeah, whether or not he's now maybe a part of the machine or. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, it, I'm it, curious. It could, that it, could, it could be. I mean, it, 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 and also because they had like the mirrored scene of the beginning of Winter Soldier um, at the beginning of this episode with Captain Carter, I, I feel like that would be a cool yeah. parallel story, I guess, to kind of kind of see with that and how and how far that that kind of goes. Lake Bell and Haley Atwell, like that opening, like going back and forth, uh, the homage to Winter Soldier. I loved it. They did it so well. I was just like, Frank Grillo came back. Like <laughs> they got him to come back. And he and he was only in like, you know, parts of those episodes too. So, yeah. And, or, and Samuel L. Jackson, except for the yeah. one where um, the Avengers were being killed by Hank Pym. Like Samuel L. Jackson was also any episode he appeared in, he only said like three or four words. Yeah, yeah. And they got they got a Hemsworth still came back. Chris Hemsworth had like a riot with in this episode, his voice acted. Yeah. (laughs) And I and and I think Natalie Portman, when I look back on the performances, I really enjoyed Natalie Portman's performance in it. I I thought her voice sounded had a sense of wonder. I have I have issues with the rendering of the character in that, which we talked about last episode. But the actual acting itself and Natalie Portman, I thoroughly enjoyed hearing her. Yeah, and um, I'm surprised that Natalie Portman showed up. Like they're like you're, you're filming Thor. Sit down. <laughs> they tricked yeah. her, thinking it was part of the Thor script. I mean, her her reason for not wanting to come back was that she didn't like where, where her character was going. She, mm-hmm. she, didn't, she didn't like being damsel in distressy and like not yeah. really doing a whole lot. And so they're like, okay, well, will you come back if we make you Thor? And she's like, okay, they're like, okay, well, we're gonna make you Thor and you need to record this voiceover. Sure, I'm already here and you're already paying me. I can just and, see Natalie and, Portman's- And you paid me for not doing any work for-, for End game. <laughs> Yeah, good faith. But I can just picture Natalie Portman where they're pitching her Thor four. They're like, "You're gonna be, you're gonna come back as Jane Foster with cancer, who becomes Thor." And Natalie Portman is like, dazzles in her. She's just like, "Yes, this, this is a role. <laughs> this is a role I'm gonna Academy stick with." Award. She's gonna get that Oscar. Fuck you, Elizabeth Olsen and Katherine Hahn. Who needs an Emmy when you're getting an Oscar for this performance? If anyone oh. could. It would be Natalie Portman. So. I, I, be, I believe Natalie Portman is going for that Oscar, but oh, wait, um, didn't she already win one? Didn't she win one for Black Swan? Yeah, she won one for Black Swan. She's getting but, another one but, for. But you know that she went for another one by playing Jackie Kennedy, and that shit did not work out. And yep. she, like, my backup plan is Thor four. Yeah, and, I. In, in, in that one where she was like the the weird pop star. Um, that did, that did. Oh work. yeah, it was like Oxfox or something. I I've totally forgot about that until now. But I, 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 I only saw the trailer and it looked like full Oscar bait. I you know what? For whatever reason, I, I'm picturing it as the closer look she had <laughs> when thinking of it. But Daryl, I have you seen the SNL skit where she's Jackie? Yeah, you uh, mean this one? No. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's 
Is that closer to the movie? Yeah, that's come on. I used to make a joke about it, like the song, like, come on closer, Natalie Portman. <laughs> Who's that actor? Because I didn't know who Gerard Butler was back in like 2001. Gerard Butler isn't in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the male lead? Who's the male lead? It's Clive Owen and Jude Law. Oh, okay. I knew Jude Law. Oh, I didn't know. Sorry. I still don't know who Clive Owen is. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, Clive Owen had like that explosion in the early 2000s and then like just disappeared. Because he was in this, Sin City, and like, uh, oh, what's the one where, it, um, first where of all, the, the, the woman gets pregnant with uh, Julianne Moore. Oh, um, I own it. Is it's it, so is it nine months? No, it's, it's the lot. It's no one's getting pregnant. And then they finally find the first pregnant woman. Oh, I don't know. I don't know oh, that one. I own it. I can't remember the title of it. They're in but, alphabetical order, but it doesn't help. I was either. obsessed with Closer. The fact that you just whipped out the DVD and and I have the script, like the the play, like the play that uh, they they published in the book. And I remember one summer, I just sat on my parents' porch and I read through it the entire afternoon. And like there were subtle differences and stuff. Like like I'm forgetting the significance of her dying on like what was it, Forty Second Street. Um, but then I, but, sidebar, I love that Alice, you know, saves three people from a burning fire. That's the, what you see at the end. And she did that with the other three people. One of them who's not Gerard Butler, but I just, oh, I love that movie. movie. <laughs> but I'm sorry that I, I do love Natalie Portman. So I will, I will no, be happy. But no, I love her too. I love her too. And I love to make fun of her. But anyways, I'm sorry, Daryl, go. Keep us on track. Spring, uh, Demanda just did show and tell. You need to pull out within arm's reach, the most random thing not related to this podcast. <laughs> not related to this podcast. No, uh, it cannot be comics related. Well, you know what I keep right next to me here in my desk drawer, though, by the way, sidebar? Oh. Because we haven't found a place. Daryl made these for me, Demanda. Oh. So I have them right here safely because I want to, you can't see as well because I want to put that something there. But wait, let me look. Let me look. What do I have here? Okay, non-comic book room. <laughs> My laptop, my Ted Baker laptop case. That's it. Ooh, I, I, uh, I'm going to pull it out. Ooh, with my auctioneer chance. Oh, there you go. Sorry. I, I have the uh, Princess Diana bean tree yes. right here. Um, England's I mean, rose, it, everyone. England's rose. Some, I mean, somewhat. Come I also have my signed gem pot by Samantha. <gasps> yes, I love wow. that. I love was, gems so much. She was also an amazing person to talk to at a convention if you ever get the chance to. She is lovely. Amanda, have we talked about jizz? Yes, we have. Okay. We have definitely, okay. We've okay. definitely talked about that before. I was obsessed with that in about 2010. So, final thoughts. Daryl, I can't believe we've done nine episodes. It's literally, like, it flew by. It did. Um, and I think that's because they kept it fresh. Like Demanda referenced, the What If comic series you could pick and choose. And I feel to a degree, you could pick and choose episodes of this series and just watch them as one-offs. You don't necessarily need a bigger picture. If you're going to watch episode nine, you probably want to watch the rest. Yeah. But if you are just into zombies, you can watch the zombies episode. If you are just into Hank Pym being a terrible person, there's an episode for you too. There's, there's an episode for that. I... He, you know, when I think of the zombie episode, it's my least favorite. Not because I thought it wasn't really well done or that Wasp fucked the universe, but I think there was a lot of unfair expectations onto it and they did something different. And I love what you said, Amanda, like where you, you sort of do have to remove yourself from it because they're going to tell the story they want to tell. And, and you need to appreciate it for that reason. So I feel like I need to come back to the zombie episode eventually because I just was expecting to, because I, I love the comic. I love the Marvel Zombies comic very much. So, you know, but overall, I thought it was a solid season. You know, it, what Demanda said, met expectations. Met expectations. There you go. Um, Three out of five. One, one thing, one thing that I will say is, I mean, I guess it's a little bit of a critique and I've heard other people say it and I'm just kind of like, nah, okay, like I kind of get their point is for something that's supposed to be like just one-offs and like doesn't need to have this overarching plot or whatever. It's like the MCU still did that with this mm -hmm. and it's like, it didn't need it. Like we didn't need to have this exiles 
kind of everyone from the episodes coming together. Guardians like, of the multiverse. Yes. Um, which also, I was like, if they call themselves the Exiles, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh um, yeah, I I did. I had you know what? I don't rem- I didn't remember it, but I had that one moment of anxiety. I was like, oh no, they're gonna. Or oh, I thought they would go through various names, and one of them would have been Exiles. Oh, they'd be like, no, we need to call ourselves this. We need to call ourselves. And they would be like, no, 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 you then then land there. Um, yeah. But um, but like we didn't necessarily need it. It was fine. Like I liked it. I still, I mean, I still enjoyed it. It was met again, met expectations. Um. But I, but I can see people who are just like, yeah, I didn't need that. Like, we could have just had another interesting, different episode of, you know, another another what if. Um, if they do continue it, which I have a feeling that they do, um, again, it would be interesting to, to, to return to Captain Carter. But other than that, I'm like, I don't want any more repeats. Like, I want to... I want a fresh universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we, yeah. We, we need more. Because if we're going to do a multiverse, it can't just be like, these four places. I wanted them to do, I wanted them to do different stories that we haven't seen and maybe see different characters that we haven't had an opportunity to so, really relish in. So, though I agree, because obviously I would always want more. And or, I think in this first season, in order for them to really sell this what if, they needed to do the retreads and they oh, needed yeah. to do these yeah. things in order to get the people who are only MCU fans on board yeah and then imagine sitting in that pitch meeting saying like we're gonna bring back you know chadwick boseman we're gonna have Haley atwell we're gonna have chris hemsworth that's that is star 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 selling it right there on on, so, on such a gamble yeah. agreed so so, so I, I i think that's what they what they did in order to be like okay so if we're gonna establish this this is yeah. what we need to do um, yeah so hopefully if they continue to do next season like it would be interesting to see them Again, more expand, maybe like some of like the lesser known folks, uh, or no, I shouldn't say lesser known, but people who didn't get as much spotlight as others. Like in the zombie, I think the one, the one that kind of did the most was like the zombie episode because they really kind of, because you know they killed like most of the main characters, so you know they gave us Agent Thirteen and you know the Russian guy. I couldn't remember his name. It took me a who he was. Oh no, excuse um, me, Ant Man's roommate. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, th- like that. That was that was kind of nice to be like, oh yeah, it's all these. Yeah, like a ragtag team, um, you know, coming together. Um, but but yeah, I mean, again, it was it was fine. It was fun. No major complaints. I'd I of course would like to see more. Um, I I would like to see like more stakes, more more drama. Um, my, I would say my least favorite was the Doctor Strange episode. Obviously that Doctor Str- that 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 particular Doctor Strange's arc is what got us to their finale mm-hmm. so they needed to to tell it and you know in in hindsight like yeah I guess it was like a thing that needed to be, to be done. But I never bought the relationship between uh, Adams and and him either and and Agreed. Benedict Cumberbatch so like the fact that that was like the crux of this whole thing I'm like I don't believe you. Now, a friend of mine did explain it to me. It wasn't necessarily her. It was the idea of her and how he needed to control more things because it's something that he felt that he should be able to do. That he should still be able to control this other aspect. Because, you know, I think we've talked about it before, but Doctor Strange is not a likable character in the MCU. He's He's not super great. Like, he's still the asshole surgeon who thinks that he's better than everyone. It's just now, instead of surgery, he's like, I'm now the Sorcerer Supreme. So now you can't question anything that I say. Yeah. Um, so, like, he's, again, he's just not, he's just not likable. So, like, having any sort of, like, sympathy or empathy or pathos for him, I'm just kind of like, dude, you're a dick. And then what did you do? You fucking destroyed your universe. Like, yeah. Just, Although, just, like, parts of that and, were... And not, excuse me, but not for love, but because you didn't want her to die. Yeah, I. it's exactly that. And, like, parts of that were just cringing. Like, when they're eating pizza, someone just comes in and, like, gets a gun and kills her. Or she drops dead of a heart attack. You would think you're like, wow, this is... It's exactly what you said. He wants to control her not dying, not save her. You know, and that is a fine distinction. 
Yeah. Wow. Thank you for making us read. Now I kind of like that episode a lot more. It was, <laughs> it was, I have them listed on like, which is my least favorite. That's my second least favorite. And now after hearing you talk, I'm like, mm, maybe that's going to go in like the middle now. <laughs> but, I, I, I mean, I, again, I also just don't, I tried, um, you know, I, when I like style hair or I'm just, I just need to like veg out, like I, 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 re, I rewatch the MCU. I can't even tell you how many times. Um, I mean, I have my favorites that I watch a lot. Winter, uh, any of the Captain Americas, especially Winter Soldier. Um, and then I, I, I like to do the, the, the four Avengers movies in a row, um, mm-hmm. yada, yada, yada. Um, and now the Black Widow's on there, that'll probably be in a rotation. It's not my favorite, but it's one of, much like, it's in the same vein as of the Captain America ones, where it's like an action movie that I don't need to really pay attention to, but I still find enough of it entertaining that I, I want to watch it on repeat. I met expectations, Black Widow. I yeah. Actually, when I saw Black Widow in the theaters, I really liked it. I don't think it has a rewatchability of some of the other like MCU movies like Captain yeah. Marvel. I have, I have something to say about Black Widow, but I'm going to come to it later. So, so I tried to watch Doctor Strange a while ago. Just mm-hmm. still didn't care for it. Yeah. At all. Really? I mean, you too, Daryl? Yeah, it's boring. I, 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 it is I, so boring. Like, I, I think I've watched it three times. And so the first time I watched it, I was like, okay, that is that is a stepping stone to get me to the next part of the MCU because Doctor Strange needs to happen in order for the things to happen that they want to have happen. Cool. Got it. The other two times I'm like, mm. just, I just feel like I'm slogging through. Just, oh my gosh. Yeah, and I saw, it, with very few exceptions, I saw every single MCU movie in theaters, mm-hmm. um, especially once they got to, like, phase two. The only one that I didn't see was Doctor Strange. I was like, why? Why do I need to see this? I'll just buy it on Blu-ray when it comes out, and they will still catch me up before the next movie comes out. Like, I, it's not a must-see for me. So I totally the, get yeah. The, the only one I didn't see in theaters was the first Thor, and uh. yeah, I you know Doctor Strange. I like the atmosphere. I've, I've I didn't like it when I first saw it. I didn't like it the second time. But much like you, Demanda, my husband and I, we keep like the MCU movies on in the background, stuff like that. I've come to enjoy Doctor Strange for what it is. I don't think it's groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. I I'm not digesting or inhaling the story. I just look up cool visual. Oh, there's a Sanctum Sanctorum, you know, I mean, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, guys, what if is now done? Yeah. And so, so I'm sorry, Daryl, go ahead. One thing I want to say, then we have your note on Wanda, I believe. Um, I, uh, I think that this format, as they roll it out, would be perfect for something that we are supposing that they're building towards which is uh, um, Secret Wars, this would be perfect for Battle World. If they yeah. did this format for Battle World and had a different Battle World for each episode. So like a season two, season two is like Battle World. Oh, well, I, I bet that's- going to be like season five, but, um, but if they wanted to weave in something else to that larger narrative once it's set up some more, I think that this would be a perfect avenue rather than having- a couple movies. One, if they do like the Hickman Secret War, where it was like, here's your level one stories, your level two stories, your level three stories, or however they market it. Yeah. And, and you have something like, what if, where it's different parts. Of, I'm 100% on that. Where 100. One of the episodes could even be like 1602. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Or A Force. No, I want A Force live action. Sorry. Scrap that note. <laughs> um, I was going to say, uh, you know, with all of the newer stuff I, you know as we're getting more and more new characters introduced um you know from from the mcu tv shows and uh the new movies that'll be coming out it'll be interesting to see like what other things like you know maybe do a whole black widow thing where it's just yelena well what if yelena was the one who joined the avengers and she was the oh, one yeah. who was, you know a part of that you know just, just because you know i think because she was such a fun character in the black widow movie and obviously they're going to continue with her with whatever Valentina's got up, up her sleeve. Um, that it, it, it'll be interesting oh, Julia for, Louise. for them to be like, you know, what what if Yelena, you know, did this or that? So my, after rewatching Black Widow again today, I was reminded, and it's been long enough that the movies have been out long enough. 
Um, so am I the only person? And again, you don't need to put this in the episode. So if you need to cut this out, you can. Um, Holly, I, we, we have demand of gold here. No, <laughs> you're, just, you're giving us demand of money. <laughs> who has put together that, or that has theorized because I, in Shang-Chi, there's the scene where they're in the fight club and there is definitely the woman who is one of the widows mm-hmm. and is credited as such in, in the end credits. Because like when I saw her in the fight club, I'm like, oh, that's one of the widows. Very cool. Very interesting. I wonder where we're going with this. And then at the end of the end, end, end of the movie, the end post credit scene where uh, sister, I can't remember her name right now, is in charge of now the 10 rings. And there's all of those female warriors. They looked very much like the widows to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I very much got those vibes. Like the actress is always like, okay, we've got a multinational group of ladies here who are obviously already fighting like that would it's a crime syndicate obviously what are who are mercenaries right now the widows ain't doing shit and they're like money please um i and and so like when i brought that up to some of my other friends who had seen it they were like no i don't think so they would have made that more and i'm like it's it was pretty blatant to me like for me i was like oh shit, the Widows have now joined the Ten Rings. Like, that's fucking perfect. Like, I love this. And, so, and we know following Black Widow, the Widows are out there. Yeah. And like, again, if you know that there's these, like, already trained assassins and you run this giant thing, what are you going to do? And you're like, no, I need girls now because the girls weren't allowed to be in the group before. I want ladies. Who am I going to go find? I'm going to go find Yeah, the you're going to get the ladies. Yeah in the world i agree like, with you it, it, i i have to see the, the to i'd have to see that end credit scene again because i didn't really absorb it other than the uh, obvious the plot beat which is Here's she me. wasn't allowed to and now they're ladies she's integrating everyone but um yeah that makes perfect sense and why they would have put a black widow in the background feige doesn't do anything just for shits and giggles like feige has a master plan yeah. you know so it just made sense to me again kids if, if you also think that, I would love to hear from you. <laughs> Again, no one is talking about, because like, you know, there's the, the, the spoiler time when, you know, people don't want to talk about stuff. And I under, completely understand that. I never want to ruin someone's experience of seeing something for the first time. But again, it's been long enough for both of those things that I'm like, can we talk about this? Because no one has brought it up. Not a single person has brought it up. No one. It, 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 just, it just seems so obvious to me, but apparently it's not that obvious. Amanda, where can the folks at home hit you up? I mean, oh, listen. Hit kids, kids. If you don't know where I am now, like, it, no. so please come find me on any social media platform, uh, especially Venmo and Cash App. D M A N D A M A R T I N I. I have got, so if you're in the DC area, uh, you know, I've posted all of my gigs uh, through October. I'm very busy, booked and blessed. Um, November, I am not as busy as far as like gigs go because I am in a play. <gasps> yes, here at the Portobello Players in La Plata, we have officially reopened and are doing a, a fun musical review um, fundraiser called All Together Now, which is going to be November twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth. Again, you can find all of this information um, in my in, my, in on my social media. Um, so I'm very excited for that. Um, I probably won't be going to any conventions until Katsukan slash Farpoint convention. Um, I also have a bunch of new, well, not a bunch, but I have um, some new looks planned. So I just premiered my Silver Banshee, which I think turned out really well. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, God. Um, so when you up- send me the selfie, because you couldn't make it to book club, and you, you, I was like, girl, trust me. No, don't worry. You look so great in it. I loved it. Thank you. So, um, I've got Fantasia coming up, which I know our friends over at uh, Mutant Musings podcast is very excited for that. Um, Aurora is coming up. Um, I also just, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about this one quite yet, but there's like one that I'm pondering. Um, it might make Dax a little mad at me um, because it's definitely a character that Dax would do, but I'm like, I already have this idea. It's been bubbling for a while. I think I'm going to do it. Uh, I just need to pull the trigger and work it into my budget that I've already planned to not do any more new cosplays. <laughs> Ooh, I, we won't speculate, 
Because because we all know that some people think that I've got demand of money. Guess what? <laughs> so far. Oh my god! And by the way, not only do they think you have demand of money, it was so cute when um when book club started. Um, it was Susanna who said that, but Susanna was like, "Wait, aren't 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 the people coming? Like the celebrities? Like where's Demanda?" <laughs> celebrity bless me so much i love her so much she didn't say so i forget what she said she said something very specific but like she almost did not want the book club to start (laughs) because you weren't there and i had to be like it literally is like chanel in like scream queens where she's looking around i'm like well i'm sorry demanda's busy does everyone still want to be here (laughs) demanda's not here yeah demanda's booked in black um that was very cute oh man well so please so please kids come follow me uh again if you're in the dc area would love to see you if you're not in the dc area and you are booking and you want to uh get some kind of rate worked out please be on me i would lo- i would love to go travel someplace and perform daryl you and i we have some episodes coming up with that i have to finish my reading on eventually but um this is not the end of us we've co-host you've been such a wonderful co-host well, for thank these you so much for having me i'm glad that i convinced you to cover what if <laughs> he messaged me like back in july it's like oh are we gonna talk about what if on the podcast i was like no and then you sold me on it and and you not only sold on, sold me on it but it has been such a wonderful journey and we've been able to bring in voices that haven't been on the podcast before uh like joseph like susanna uh philip joshua it, it's just been so wonderful and it's thank you because this has felt so communal and it's exactly what we wanted but we both agreed the last episode had to be demanded <laughs> Yes, it absolutely. was Demanda. It was Demanda. Demanda and her Demanda money showing I, up. I, I have to say, how many episodes have I been on? I don't know a lot. I don't even keep track. All right, guys. Well, that wraps our what if coverage. We will be back next week. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.